<laughs> we are here today from the desk of the executive director, not at the desk. Again. You're not, you're at my executive desk. Your executive desk, your executive chef desk. Well, you know, I'm not really a chef. But being I'm more of a witch. Chef sounds really tight. It but does. It sounds like I'm not like, fun, and I have a white coat on, right. and that's like literally the exact opposite like of who chef. I am. Yeah, like a witch. See, I've got all my witchy things. I've got like my crystals. You and create stuff. Yeah. Magically. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Like make me tuna out of watermelon. Right. Say no more. I'll do it. I'll do it. Using my crystal and my right, witchcraft, my spell. So, so yeah, we're making groceries. <laughs> That's where we are. Um, I started this little business in 2019 after quitting my high school teaching career. I taught high school history for five years and just didn't want it anymore. I've been in the restaurant industry. This next year will be my 20th year in the restaurant industry, cumulatively. Um, and so yeah, I quit my teaching career and opened a taco, vegan taco business out of a tailgate tent. Why not? Um, <laughs> right before the pandemic. So I would just kind of pop up and you know visit breweries and things like that where they didn't have food and wanted a food option. and. It, seemingly started to gain traction and then COVID kind of shut us down a little bit with that. So I had to reinvent myself with some meal prep that I would go deliver. And then I was in the Oro O'Keefe Museum for a year until last July, moved out of there and started this build out here and opened in October. So we're working on our first year, totally homegrown. And it's been uh, going fantastic, right? Uh, Your yeah. business is really increased. Yeah, we're booming, man. Yeah. I really didn't think that we would be doing this level of volume and gain this much traction and appreciation so soon. But we're doing something so different from the rest of the other restaurants on the coast. And fortunately, I have such a beautiful coalition of chefs and restaurateurs that have my back. We're a very close-knit restaurant community, so if we ever need anything, we can just hit each other up. And Oh, that's great. Yeah, so if I didn't have that, I definitely probably wouldn't be hmm. where I'm at now. So what was your vision around kind of um, clean eating, healthy eating, um, vegan, <clears throat> plant-based? So my husband took me to Austin, Texas to meet some friends of his that he had met in grad school, and they were vegan and gluten-free. So we go to Austin and there's, if you've ever been to Austin, you know there's like a hundred vegan, gluten-free, plant-based restaurants and it just really kind of blew my mind. That was my first true experience with vegan or vegetarian cuisine, well vegan cuisine, and how diverse and um, impressive. It was just impressive. I remember just being so like, what? Satan? What's that? Yeah. I mean, we don't do that here, but I'm hoping to get into it soon to make our own. But um, we came home and decided to give up meat. It was that profound of an experience. I've always loved to cook. So just using all of my staple recipes that we enjoyed growing up and just kind of switched out like ground meat for lentils or chickpeas for chicken or whatever. And all of my family meals are recipes that I would prepare for my twin boys and my husband when we first went plant-based. Oh. So I know if they're gonna eat it, probably anybody will, you know? Because right. um, it's all those satiable pla flavor profiles that trick you into not missing the meat, you know? We're, not, we're never gonna try to emulate meat in any kind of way or you know, unless it's like a seitan or something, right. but um, which you know, we haven't like, gotten into. But. I think it's peculiar how like vegetarians or people are vegans, like we create hot dogs and tofu, tofu dogs, tofu dogs, you know. Carrot dogs, tofu have you ever burgers. had a carrot dog? Yes. So good. It's odd, right? But we yeah. try to kind of imitate or emulate them, but that's what I love about y'all. You don't really do that. Well, and if I do like a meat emulation, right, I'm going to use a vegetable nine times out of ten, but I've had so much requests for um, the only thing I make really that's seitan-esque is a kaneka sausage, a vegan kaneka sausage out of white beans and a little bit of seitan, uh, vital wheat gluten. Uh -huh. um, but I just, it go, kind of goes against everything I believe in because seitan isn't healthy. Right, right. You know, I get a lot of requests for yeah. it, but it's just, it's not healthy. Yeah. I, I use 
the tofu that we get from the local farm in South Louisiana to make my meaty things or turn vegetables into something that... Yeah. Because it's kind of like the impossible meat or whatever that is, right? That's not really very healthy. So, it's full of sodium. Yep, full of sodium. And there's no real like nutritional value to it, so yeah. being more mindful of that, incorporating a bunch of beans and greens is another thing that I like to do, mm -hmm. like trick people into eating. Yeah. All the healthy things that they need to, just season the right way so they don't know it's so healthy. Right. So yeah. thank you for making a space for healthy eating. I think it's yeah, I know. I mean, I'm glad to do it. I'm just so grateful that I have the support and the response because if I didn't, I wouldn't be here anymore. So you, so you community's really, doing a good job. Community of Biloxi and the surrounding areas are really yeah, I mean, embracing. I'm, oh, absolutely. And the gratitude that I feel on a daily basis. I've never experienced this mm. in the restaurant industry to the, to the degree of which I'm experiencing it now. Like people just... Oh my God! Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for being here, and it's just such a beautiful thing. Wow! It's such a thankful wow. job. That's you beautiful because oftentimes in the restaurant industry, my experience has been it's not such a thankful job, right? Right, yeah. and that's my experience too. And then you know, of course, coming from a teaching career. <laughs> right. Yeah. I joked the other day, and I said. Well, I'm still an educator, but I get to name my price with my cooking classes. There you go, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. Uh, but they are affordable, so don't be scared of them. When do you do cooking classes? We're going to start our cooking classes, hopefully, in... We're going to start them back, hopefully, in September. We've still been just so crazy summer busy still, and we're having some transitional staffing things happen right now. Um, but we're getting that kind of, getting everybody trained and getting them on a good schedule and a good flow. So I don't want to add anything extra to them. Yeah. Where yeah. are you going to do the cooking class? Here. I do here? the cooking classes really? here. Yeah. So they're really laid back. Um, basically what I do is I do a four course dinner with some of the things that I make and I'll pick a theme like tofu or cheese or, mm. you know, something like that. And then, um, I basically ask at the beginning of class, what level of instruction are you looking for? No. Do you want like entertainment and to drink wine and chill and eat? Or do you want me to go step by step and show yeah. you how to do this? And nine times out of 10, they're like, meh, we'll write it down. And we just want to eat. Yeah. But then they do leave with recipes and things like that. And you know, obviously if they have questions, they can holler back. And so I how big are your to... classes usually? 10. 10. 10. So it's very close knit. Um, open conversation, no real mm. structure, but that's how I taught history too, so right, there's right. no surprise. No structure, no this is No structure, history. yeah, get up, walk around, who yeah. cares, yeah. yeah. Well, that's really awesome. Yeah, it's and it's really fun, it's really fun, and you know, most of the time we'll take a little field trip to the back so yeah. they can see the back and see how we do things and... Evening classes? Yeah, they're in the okay. evening, so they usually start around 6 or 6.30 give people time to get their babysitters situated or whatever, yeah. get off work, sit down for a second. <laughs> and I usually do them on Wednesday, but I'm entertaining the idea of doing some weekend ones too. Um, it's just a matter of getting there. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep my eye open. Yeah, for sure. So I'm um, such a poor cook. I'll help you. Oh, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I need that. I can't teach you how to be a witch, but I can teach you how to cook. Yeah, cook. Can you teach me to be a warlock? <laughs> Maybe. Is there a difference? Yeah, I think so. Warlock and witches? I don't even know. I think a warlock's more like a wizard. Oh. I don't know. I feel like wizards might have more power. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm not power hungry, so... Right, so it doesn't fit... Witch. Yeah, exactly. Fit like a light witch. Witch yeah. light. Like yeah. a diet witch. Even. Right, diet witch. Yeah. Boy, we went down another hole, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. That was a squirrel. That was a shiny object for me. Thank I think you. we both have ADD. I think Pretty so. Good. Oh, yeah. Are you medicated for that? No, I'm I should either. be. Right I know. Here. Oh, that, anyway. oh, you guys are still here? <laughs> thank you for being here. We, we're try oh my gosh, we should take that on the road, maybe some comedy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah. Definitely. S so thank you. Um, do you need anything else? you want to share I don't know, they else? can't ask me questions. I know, it's so difficult. I know, I wish they could. But they can ask me questions in October when I do right. my, my thing. Yeah, in my October, thing. actually, right? Lauren's going to be... Um, a part of our Equity and Justice Making Good Trouble conference. Yeah. 
and you're going to talk about plant-based food and healthy eating and clean eating and show us, right? Yeah. And you're actually serving lunch. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm actually going to like show you guys how to make anything, but we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you about eating clean and why it's yeah. important and why it's good for the environment. Yeah. There's just so many layers. Mm -hmm. So many layers. Yep. It's interesting because actually I. I've done a lot of research on dog food lately because my dog is aging. Aww. And they talk a lot about clean food for dogs too. Yeah, like, like the grain humans. free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feed clean. Food's fuel, guys. It is. You it's put gas in, if you put sugar in your gas tank. What's going to happen? It's not going to. Mm -mm. You're right. It's not going to. So thank you for what you do. Thank, thank you, you for feeding us. Thank you for what you do. I know. Thank you. Well, let's thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> And, and just for being such a big part of, I think, downtown Biloxi and yeah. the movement uh, of really the growth and kind of the transition of the downtown. It's our home. Yeah. And for being a part of our board of directors. And it is our home. It, it becomes home very quickly. But it you were up here. So yeah. I'm kind of a transplant from northern Mississippi, but it really becomes home. Well, there's a lot of places I'd like to live, but it's not Biloxi. No. I know. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. uh, that's great. Yeah. Very great. Well, thank you, Lauren, so much. Thanks, friend. Support. Um, Support making groceries, support Back Bay Mission, yeah. and just support the movement for equity and justice and for healthy eating, right? And good trouble. And good trouble. Stir it up. Stir it up, make trouble. Yep. So thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, guys.